there's a, a lot of work going on in the immunotherapy field in all malignancies, of course. I think immunotherapy has, for the last 10 years, been a major area of uh, drug development and really enhanced uh, treatment outcomes in many, many solid tumors through immune checkpoints uh, and, and also in many heme malignancies like ALL diffused large B cell through CAR T cells and emerging CAR NK cells. Uh, in AML, unfortunately, we have had a struggle in developing immunotherapies. Um, we at MD Anderson were one of the first groups six, seven years ago to launch a number of trials looking at different immune checkpoints and different combinations in different AML MDS settings, PD-1 inhibitors, CTLA-4, PDL one even things like the TIM-3 and others. Unfortunately, we did not find the success we were hoping uh, and the success that had been seen in solid tumor with the traditional T-cell immune checkpoints, PD-1, PDL one CTLA-4. Uh, others also uh, did trials, randomized studies looking at azacitidine with PDL one inhibitors, dorvalumab, azacitidine with other PD-1 inhibitors, pembrolizumab, and unfortunately, none of them have shown a very clear uh, signal or biomarker-driven population that could be selected to really develop these immune checkpoints for T-cells in a broad way in AML. However, what we now are starting to see is that there is another a uh, group of drugs that could be potentially used to more potently activate and directly activate T cells. These are called the bispecific antibodies or T cell engagers or DARTs. And, and there's a few of those in clinical trials currently. The one that's most advanced it, it is a CD123 DART antibody developed out of the WashU group, uh, which targets CD3, CD123, a drug called flotituzumab. And this drug has shown activity in relapsed refractory AML, especially in a particularly difficult group of relapsed refractory refractory AML called primary refractory uh, AML. And so the hope is that this drug could have uh, activity in this population. And there are a lot of immunological, biological reasons for why the primary refractory population may have a hyperactivated interferon gamma immune signature that could be harnessed by these darts, bringing the T cells into the environment and activating them. Uh, the study is still ongoing in the phase 1B, and we do need to wait and see more mature follow-up and data to understand if this will have a path forward. There are other bispecific antibodies, AMG330, AMG476, XMAP, that are also being looked at and showing activity. But the issue with the bispecifics is that they do have some activity, but they do have very high rate of CRS. And there's a lot of close inpatient monitoring, uh, dose interruptions, adjustments, use of drugs to manage cytokine release. And so I think this will be a challenging field. I think finally, we have now started to see signals using completely different modalities of T cell therapies, including both CAR T cells. There was a very encouraging presentation at the ASCO meeting from a uh, company called GZ Biogene in China, where they looked at the CLL1 targeted CAR T cells in relapsed refractory pediatric AML, median of three prior salvages. Uh, so very difficult population. And they actually showed nine out of 11 patients who had this relapsed refractory CLL1 positive AML had a response. And in fact, seven of those nine were MRD negative and seven or eight made a transplant with good durability six months post-transplant. So this is the first uh, good positive signal, I would say, for a CAR T cell per se in AML. And we also are working with a another CLL1 targeted CAR T from Kite, which is just open in multiple centers in US. And we're very excited. The study is very early, phase one, uh, but we're hoping for a similar response rate in adult AML with CLL1, which I think is probably one of the best targets uh, emerged after many years of research in uh, AML. And then I think beyond T cells in AML, what we're starting to see that it's not the adaptive immune system that may be the one that is still uh, functional and can be leveraged. It may be the innate immune system. And uh, giving credence to this idea is the fact that macrophage activating drugs such as CD47, SERP, alpha are showing very, very encouraging activity in combination with azacitidine in both frontline higher risk MDS and in frontline AML, especially in TP53 AML. And another component of the innate immune system, NK cells, now has shown in a recent press release from a company called FADE that their NK cell non-CAR high affinity CD16 activated manipulated product, which can actually be generated off the shelf from a IPSC cell line, is showing very encouraging responses uh, in relapsed refractory AML. So I think we are more and more shifting to innate immune system 
based therapies, macrophage, NK cell, dendritic cell based. And eventually we may find a way to combine these because we do know that when you activate macrophages, they kill the tumor cells, they disperse antigen, and that can then produce a very favorable immunobiology interferon gamma rich environment for T cells to come in. And so I think the next step in the next three, four years will be to see how we can combine macrophage activating NK cell based therapies with potential T cell based treatments. Some of these trials are already starting in lymphoma, which is I think much more advanced than us in CAR T cells, uh, but eventually will hopefully come in for AML. So I do think in the next four or five years, we're going to see a huge amount of research and hopefully major breakthroughs with both T cell, NK cell, macrophage based therapies for the treatment of AML.